Now more than ever, life in the public eye is a risky business. One wrong word or move could bring about the premature end to an otherwise promising career. Let's take a look at some once well-loved celebrities who truly damaged their careers with one bad interview. Vincent Gallo, known for his art house style movies and radical views on politics, Vincent Gallo has always been a controversial figure in the public eye. However, it wasn't his love for Donald Trump or pretentious narcissism that really put his career on the downslide, rather his comments on the actor Christina Ricci. Gallo and Ricci were co-stars on Gallo's debut full-length directional Buffalo 66. The movie was highly acclaimed and nominated for many awards, including Best First Feature at the Independent Spirit Awards. Two years after the film was released, Gallo gave an interview to the New York Post and surprised everyone with his comments about his co-star. When Richie was mentioned in the interview, Gallo was quick to say that she was fine to work with as long as she was sober, and said he believes she has a drinking problem. He went on to brag that he strictly controlled Richie's diet on set to have her lose weight. This is even worse when you consider that Richie notably suffered from an eating disorder during her teenage years. He then said he didn't like Richie at all and called her an ungrateful C-word. But it was okay because, in his words, she's basically a puppet. I told her what to do and she did it. In response to the interview, Richie's publicist said the comments were very surprising, especially since Richie had apparently only ever had nice things to say about Gallo. Although still early in her career, Richie was well loved by American audiences for her role as Wednesday Adams in The Adams Family. And thus, when Gallo's interview was released, most of the support swayed towards Richie. His opinions of her were super surprising, especially since Gallo had previously described Richie as his muse and said he had a huge crush on her before she was cast in Buffalo 66. Since the interview, which took place in 2000, Gallo has released three other movies, none of which got much attention or high acclaim. His movie The Brown Bunny was called the worst movie in the history of Cannes, where it debuted. Gallo occasionally appears in the spotlight when he makes controversial comments to the media. He stated his pride over having Donald Trump as his president, bragged about owning seven million worth of unused property across LA. He also criticized actor Rose McGowan for not calling out Harvey Weinstein for his history of violating women sooner. Paula Abdul You may remember Paula Abdul as the nice judge from the earlier days of American Idol, but it turns out she's someone with quite a controversial history. In 2005, Abdul was involved in a hit and run on the San Fernando Valley Freeway, clipping another car with her Mercedes and failing to stop or offer assistance to the driver she hit. She was ordered to pay over 1,500 in fines and sentenced to two years of informal probation. That same year, claims were made by a contestant on American Idol that he and Abdul had a secret relationship and she coached him on how to win the show. These claims were disputed by Abdul and fellow judge Simon Cowell who said the claims were unfounded and likely a cheap publicity grab. However, it wasn't either of these incidents that took Abdul out of the limelight. In January 2007, during a week of promotions in preparation for a new season of American Idol, Abdul gave an interview to Q13 Fox News, and viewers noticed something was off about her behavior. Slurring her words and swaying in her seat, viewers began to speculate that Abdul was under the influence of something during the interview. <laughs> How about a lot of you coming in? <laughs> it's, a, it's a wild party where you are. That, yeah, that's what we hear. <laughs> and quickly the rumors hit the tabloids and online message boards. The public's perception of the interview was so bad that Abdul's spokesperson, Jeff Ballard, had to issue a statement. He insisted that Abdul does not overindulge in any kind of narcotics, legal or otherwise. He attributed this strange interview to technical issues and Abdul being exhausted after a full week of interviews and being on camera for her new reality show, Hey Paula. Nobody believed these half-hearted explanations and public opinion of Abdul was on the decline. It didn't help that she'd already been suspected before of using substances after she appeared to be acting strangely on an episode of American Idol. Abdul responded to the claims by saying while she doesn't drink or take any medication, she does receive weekly anti-inflammatory shots for a neurological condition. Rumors of her narcotic dependency worsened when Hey Paula aired 
and showed Abdul acting erratically and being disrespectful towards her staff. The show was canceled after one season, and in 2009, she officially departed from American Idol. In 2020, Abdul admitted in an interview that she'd struggled with a dependency on prescription painkillers which she claims to have conquered thanks to a successful surgery, yoga, and spiritual practice. John Mayer During the height of his career, John Mayer was one of the biggest heartthrobs in the music industry. His soft, husky voice and romantic lyrics were enough to entice any young female fan, but it took one terrible, offensive interview to bring his empire down. In 2010, Mayer did an interview with Playboy, in which he discussed his relationships, his career, and his experience of being an honorary black man. Let's unpack that. The singer, actor, and musician said in the interview that black people love him because of his tendency to come on very strong. He also claimed to have a hood pass, but said calling it that was contradictory. And if you actually had a hood pass, you would call it an N-word pass. He and the interviewer went on to discuss his relationship with black women. Mayer said he isn't open to dating black women because, again, his idea is only attracted to white women. He did, however, say that he thinks Carrie Washington is very attractive and he thinks that she's white girl crazy and she would break your heart like a white girl. Mayer also had some interesting things to say about some of his exes, including Jennifer Aniston and Jessica Simpson. He claimed that Aniston is still stuck in the past and wishing it was 1998, which is notably during her time on the widely successful TV show Friends. He also implied that she was jealous of his success because of Mayer's popularity on social media. He went into uncomfortable detail about his personal life with Simpson, saying that he chose to put up with the media attention their relationship garnered because he was addicted to sleeping with her. He described their physical relationship as crazy and like napalm. Towards the end of the interview, Mayer recalls the time he met Prez Hilton at a New Year's Eve party. Mayer claims he gave Hilton the dirtiest, tongiest kiss in an effort to outgay him. He said the kiss was so aggressive, he felt like he hated non-straight people, once again paraphrasing, as the noun he used was much more offensive. Following the publication of the interview, there was public outrage against Mayer. Many were shocked by his blatant prejudice and disrespect for his past girlfriends, particularly Jessica Simpson. Mayer apologized for his use of the racial slur, but was not received well by the public. The backlash became so much that he withdrew from the media and refused to give any more interviews for a pretty long time. Very little was heard from Mayer until he appeared on The Ellen DeGeneres Show in 2012, in which he reflected on the interview and said the backlash was a wake-up call for him. In as early as 2017, a critic said they were reluctant to call Mayer a talented musician after the said interview, even though Mayer is undoubtedly an excellent guitar player. What do you think of these disastrous celebrity interviews? Were they deserving of all the backlash they got? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. Until next time, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel.